The Antigonid Kingdom is considered one of the hardest starts in Imperator Rome, not least because you get attacked by all the other Diadochs at the start in a war so painful it makes you wish you were Alexander IV in the loving hands of Cassander. In today's video, we are not only going to be trying to win the first awful war, but trying to reclaim Alexander's legacy and reform his empire. Can we live up to great Alexander's legacy? Stay tuned to find out. Well, here we are as the Antigonid Kingdom, guys, with glorious Antigonus Monothalmus over here. The Antigonid Kingdom is widely considered one of the hardest nations in the game, guys, because we are going to be declared war on by all of the other Diadochs, and we are right in the middle of them as well. But what are we going to do as the Antigonid Kingdom, guys? Well, I think when we're playing the Diadochs, there's only one thing that we can do, and that is to restore Alexander's empire. Though here we are, Alexandros the Great Argiad, 18 years ago, the Argiad king Alexandros III died suddenly in Babylon at the age of 32. In the five years preceding his death, his continuing military successes had reshaped the world as known to the Greeks, his empire stretching uninterrupted from Egypt to the Indus. The suddenness of Alexandros's early death and his lack of chosen successor sent shockwaves through the hierarchy of satraps and generals who attended him, splintering his empire into elements ruled by potentates styled as diadochi. For many years, they and their successors have been locked in a bitter struggle over the future of the empire, drawing all nations within their sphere of influence into the conflict. The wars of the Diadochi will surely continue. Perhaps it is up to the Antigonid Kingdom to decide how it will end. Tech-wise, guys, we are going to get as much discipline as we can. Professional training in their Manipula Legion. We're also going to get Boeotian Helmet too. And then when we get our next techs, we're going to go down Sapping, Scorpio, Siege Towers. Try and get that. Omen-wise, let's get discipline. For our ideas, we are going to get Morale of Armies. We're going to get Monthly Corruption. And we're going to get Loyalty of Generals and Admirals as well. We also start with four Integrated Cultures, which is not amazing. And only 97 Macedonian pop skies, which is is really not good. <laughs> and Hellenism is similarly low with 25% of our population Hellenic. Missions wise, let's take Antigonos' vision, which let's be honest, is one of the best names for a mission tree I've ever seen. <laughs> The glorious achievements of Antigonus have put the other successors to shame and the state he has carved out of Alexandros' empire is set to become the most powerful Diadochi kingdom dominating the Mediterranean. So let's start that. Honor and family will see us through. That gives us tax and discipline. Fantastic. Let's take the Eastern Capital mission. It costs us 250 gold, which is not ideal right now. Oh, we could get an alliance with Thrace. I think that will actually be genuinely quite helpful. So um, let's do that for now. Let's also raise all of our levies. And we are going to pretty much focus on Macedon right at the start. That is going to be very helpful. I also know that our Legion doesn't have much supply train. So we're going to get two more of that. That should make it easier to siege down without losing too many troops. And now we have the coronation of Antigonos. After Demetrius smashed the Egyptian fleet at Salamis, he sent his most trusted officer, Aristodamus of Miletos, with news of our great victory. Aristodamus hailed Antigonus as Basilius before the assembled crowd and the people rejoiced. A coronation swiftly followed and Antigonus shall now be known as Basilius to all and sundry. News has reached the ears of Antigonus, however, that Demetrius, now crowned as co-king, has taken to mocking the other Diadochi and giving them derogatory titles. Seleucus, the commander of elephants. I mean, that's not even a bad title. Ptolemaeus, the admiral. Lysimachus, the treasurer. And even Agathocles, the governor of Sicily, though he is not one of us. When they hear of this, they will certainly be displeased. Honestly, I think we'll take the second option and see whether we can potentially get an alliance with the Ptolemies. It's unlikely, but if we can, it's going to be so, so helpful in the early game. I'm also going to get it in alliance with Armenia because we know from our other game, guys, these guys have about 40,000 troops. Right then, let's uh, press play and hope. Here we go, the Wars of the Diadochi, guys. Having built the largest empire the world has ever seen, Alexandros the Great died suddenly 19 years ago with no clear successor to his empire. His generals have since fought over the spoils, coming to be known as the Diadochi, or successors. As the satrap of Phrygia, our ruler Antigonus was not part of most of the great campaigns of Alexandros, but in the conflicts of the last decades, he has risen to the most powerful of the successors. Elsewhere, Seleucus has succeeded in reclaiming Babylon and united the Eastern Empire, and the struggle for Greece continues against Cassandros in Macedon. 
our reputation as a protector of the free Greek cities has earned us many friends among the smaller Greek states, but otherwise we now stand alone. So there's two options here, guys. We can either get all of Antigonus' skills down to seven and use some political influence and money, or we can just go, the empire belongs to the strongest. And if we fail to conquer Corinth Corinthos or we lose Ascalon, Antigonea, and all of that sort of thing, our empire will fall apart. So we need to make sure that we don't do any of that. So guys, full disclosure, I have tried this four times already. The first time we just got ruffle stomped by everyone. The second time we actually were doing rather well. And then the Ptolemies managed to take Antigonia over here. The other times have just been kind of a combination of the two. So we have to try something a little bit different. And what I'm thinking of doing is going to... Uh, military service over here when we get uh, enough political influence so that we get our levies 10% rather than 2.5% over here because we just need more troops. Stuff that I have learned though guys is the fact that our troops are absolutely dog awful at the start like really really shockingly bad compared to the rest of these kingdoms because of the fact that we have these integrated cultures that have a lot crapper troops than us. It's just pain. Right then, we have the war with Cassandros. Let's say Cassandros will rule the day and we will go to war with Macedon. Let's get that in there and we will call our allies into these wars. And Adrissia has declared war on Thrace. That is absolutely fine. Uh, Thrace can deal with that. Let's now go for military service. I don't know whether this is going to delete our legion. Hopefully not, but uh, let's find out. We should also be able to re-raise these guys relatively soon. Right then, let's raise everyone over here. And there, instantly, we have quite a few more troops. I'm not going to worry at all uh, about the Seleucids initially. I'm going to try and let Armenia deal with that. And uh, these troops over here are going to go and deal with Macedon. And here comes the Ptolemaic Ultimatum. That is going to put us to war with the Ptolemies right away. Now, we don't have many troops over here, so but we do need to keep hold of Ascalon. That is the main thing. And there, we won the Siege of Corinth. Secure the Antigonid position. That gives us provincial loyalty and religion happiness as well. Now, we need to keep hold of a lot of these lands in order for us to not die when Antigonus dies. So, yeah, that's the hard part about this. We can also take Demetrius's playground, which gives us siege ability and morale of armies. Fantastic. Fantastic. I found a lot of this really is kind of RNG as well, guys. Like, it just depends what happens with some of these other people. Because one of the runs, the Seleucids were attacked by, I think, Sogdia or Parnia. And it really helped out because their troops were all in the east. But the other runs, they haven't been. So they've been an absolute nuisance. And instantly, we lost the first battle against the Ptolemies. <laughs> Oh, the Ptolemies are very, very hard to deal with. They have some pretty good troops, honestly. And there we go. War with the Seleucids as well. No, no, no. <laughs> Not again. And with Armenia's help, hopefully we can push the Ptolemies back down here. But let's see. Come and help us, Armenia, please. No. Armenia has just abandoned us. Great. <laughs> well, as long as they don't take Ascalon, I'm happy for them to come up the coast here. So let's get some mercs and let's get our guys together. Our guys have quite low morale as well, unfortunately. Let's now secure the frontier as well. And we're going to go for Mesopotamia. Well, here we go. Another big battle. We've got to try and win that one. But unfortunately, like I said, our troops are just so, so bad. Well, there we go. We've pushed back the Antigonids over here. So hopefully, you know, we can try and siege down a few of these areas. And now they've taken Ascalon. That is one thing that we do 100% need to take back if we are going to, of course, survive this. And once again, we are pushed back by the Ptolemies. <laughs> we just can't beat them in a single fucking battle. Jesus. And somehow the Ptolemies have troops over in the middle of uh, our lands now. <laughs> and there we have conquered Pella. That is definitely going to help us out. And as you can see, the Ptolemies are already on... Antigonia, like we, we we just genuinely can't do anything. We don't have money for mercs. Like we have nothing. Like the only thing we can do is try and sort this out as quick as possible, which is what we're trying to do. And there goes our capital. Fantastic. <laughs> and now we got the Celtic invasion rather early, if you ask me. I mean, one good thing is that Armenia is like ravaging the Seleucid lands here, and they're also at a war with Moria, which yeah, that's. That is good for us. And now we get the Gauls in Anatolia. Honestly, I feel like that's really early compared to the other times I've played this, but that's 100k troops we have to deal with in Anatolia now. 
great. Oh, for God's sake, they literally just won the Siege of Pella just before we were about to move past them. Oh my God. All right, let's raise our levy in Macedon. It's 19,000 troops. So I think that's going to be enough to destroy these guys. I'll take Cassandrea first because honestly... I think Macedon is nearly done, which is good for us. Okay, we've won back Antigone. That is really, really, really helpful. Oh, my God. Where are the Ptolemy's troops? Are they in another war as well? I don't know. Let's have a look. No, they're not. So I don't honestly know where their troops are right now. So Macedon is looking very nice for us currently. We just need to make sure that these troops don't take anything. Um, and we need to siege this down as quick as possible. And then Macedon will be over. So that is very, very useful. Of course, we have some issues over here, including, you know, the uh, the Gauls mainly. But with this new levy of Macedonia, that has definitely helped. We've also got these troops here that should be able to help out. And the Seleucids are kind of dying right now. Honestly, I'd be willing to take a white piece with the Seleucids if we can at some point. But... Let's see how we do against the Ptolemies. All right, then let's test ourselves against the Barbarians with decent troops, finally. Let's see how we do. And I think we are going to win just about. So all we need to do is get to 10 war score and hopefully we can piece these guys out. And some of the Celts have settled in Phrygia in Paphlagonia over here. So that is going to help us uh, immeasurably because that reduces one of our wars. And now we can piece out with these Barbarians. That definitely does help quite a bit. And the Seleucids will take a white piece. I know this is horrendous border gore, guys, but we've got to take it. We have to take it. And we now need to rush back to Ascalon if we can. That is going to uh, basically make sure that we don't fall apart when uh, Antigonus dies. Well, can 10k beat 30k barbarians? I'm not sure, but we might as well try it. It's, it's, it's apparently going to be quite even. Let's see. Okay, looks like we did it well at the start, but not doing so well on the second phase because we're running out of troops. But if we could just get rid of them around... Ah, we lost. <laughs> and that is Macedon done, surely. No, we need to take... Oh, God, they've got Chalkis now. Oh, God's sake. I thought we were done with goddamn Macedon. Well, luckily, I think all we need to do now is take Chalkis and Macedon is dead. So that's what we're going to do. Well, we can actually get a few more levies. So let's get them up. And we've cleaned up this area quite a bit. We need to make sure this middle area doesn't die. And also we defeat the barbarians. Um, but for that, we need troops. And we don't have many. <laughs> and we have won back Ascalon, which is hugely, hugely important. Oh my god, guys. I don't know what just happened. But we got the Antigonid cause, and I literally just pressed assault on Chalkis, and we took it. And then this happened, so we're so close to falling apart again. So let's go long live the king. Succession crisis, the recent instability caused by the death of Antigonus Monophalmus. So yeah, of course, uh, Antigonus Gonatus is, uh, is going to be not too happy. Because we have Demetrios as our king right now. But we didn't fall apart. I think that's the main thing. <laughs> I think all that Macedon has is this tiny little piece of land here, which... And there we go, boys. That is Macedon done. Let's just uh, white piece with Argos. Fantastic. Now we can get out of Greece. Oh, yes. Come on. This might be the one, boys. This might be the one. I don't want to jinx it, though. And down in the south, because of the succession crisis, a lot of these guys have become... Um, disloyal, so we need to just get them loyal and uh, start retaking some of this stuff. Now we do need to deal with the Celts and, of course, the Ptolemaic land over here. And there's a crisis in the Ptolemies! Yes! Come on! Hopefully they have a civil war. That would be so, so useful. Well, here we go. We are fighting the Celts now, guys. There we go. And I think we're going to win this one. Glorious. That is so, so good for us. Oh, that is going to help us out a lot. And look, the Ptolemies are getting attacked over here too. Oh, come on. This is... Oh, this is this is getting good. Come on. This might be the one, guys. This might be the one. I've tried so many times. I've been playing for like five hours already. <laughs> we can do it. Maybe we can do it. And there we go. We can actually peace out the Celts. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. This is it, boys. This is it. Let's go. Oh, and unfortunately, because the Ptolemies are fighting the... 
Celts and we pieced out. We can't take this land anymore. And the Ptolemies are starting to summon a few more troops, but we are beating them back pretty easily right now. And with only 7,000 troops, so... Oh, this is... This feels so good. This feels so good. We've got so many troops on the way. That's a bit annoying, but... I can deal with that if we take out the Ptolemies. <laughs> and the Ptolemies are on very low as well. So we could piece them out if we wanted to. I think while we are, you know, sort of in this war and we are okay at the moment, we have to just take the opportunity to keep on going. I'm also going to kill a pig so that our stability doesn't get to zero <laughs> quite so soon. Oh, and the Ptolemies pieced out with, um, with the guys over here. That's fantastic. That allows us to take this back now as well. Awesome. And I genuinely haven't seen a Ptolemaic army apart from this one for absolute ages. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Let's have a look around here, make sure that we haven't lost any more land to them. Oh my god, look at this, guys. This is so, so nice. Uh, I, I feel like, honestly, guys, like, if you do this, there is a lot of RNG involved. I mean, we had really good RNG with the Seleucids being at war then. Um, in the other runs, we didn't have quite as good RNG. So, genuinely, a lot of RNG is involved, I feel like, in doing, in managing to pull this off. So, <laughs> But I hope you have enjoyed, like, this war, guys. So, please do like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this, because... It's been a lot of hours, and it's been a lot of pain. <laughs> oh, my days. The conquest of Alexandria. We will protect it, of course. We, you know, we aren't trying to step on Alexander's legacy at all. And we have the tomb of an emperor. After the conquest of Alexandria, our soldiers, as usual, sacked the city, making off with all manner of spoils. There was, however, one area of the city that remained largely untouched by looting. A grand edifice looming over the tightly packed districts of Alexandria stood proud throughout our conquest. In it lies the body of the most revered of men, Alexander. His victories almost innumerable. This man had a vision the likes of which has not been seen since. It seems that he has been buried with the honour and respect that he must have deserved in a great city overlooking a sea he once called home. Such a man deserves to be left in peace. Yeah, of course we will leave him in peace. And we could move his body, but I think we're not going to disturb him. We are going to take the stability because we are struggling for that right now. <laughs> and now we get the conquest of Memphis. Fantastic. And we have gone up in rank two. Awesome. Let's see if we can take all of the rest of the... Uh, Ptolemaic lands before we peace out and uh, see what we want to do after that. And the Ptolemies keep coming back <laughs> in the middle of Anatolia, so we do need to keep fighting them. Luckily, our little vassals are doing a fantastic job of that. <laughs> Hopefully, we can stack wipe them over here. And there we go. Mopped them completely up there. Fantastic. Let's keep on going, boys. Oh, because we're in a deficit, uh, one of the uh, mercenary companies has de declared their uh, independence down here, but I think we'll be okay. I think we can deal with that, no problem. And this is where we start getting all of this extra aggressive expansion because we're taking lands I believe we don't have claims on. Yeah, all of this land up here we don't have claims on. We do have claims down here, so the aggressive expansion should be a lot less, but it's a little bit annoying trying to deal with these little, like, units all the time. And for our first tradition, guys, I think we're going to go for Greek Kingdom traditions and try to go down here towards popper simulation speed because we're going to need that very, very soon once these wars have ended. <laughs> we can also piece out of this war here with our mercenaries. Let's get Diadochi Conquest over here, which gives Antigonid Kingdom gains safe hands, national manpower, culture happiness, and heavy cavalry discipline. Awesome. And look at the Ptolemies now, boys. This is all they have left. Oh, <laughs> how good is that? Honestly, though, I think we peace out because we're at 95 aggressive expansion and Chironatia has just brought a new army over here. So let's peace out of this. Oh. <laughs> Victory in the first wars at least, guys. Victory in the first wars at least. Oh my god. It's taken so long to get here. It was worth it in the end though, wasn't it? <laughs> Let's get rid of our, our armies and see what we want to do with everything else. I'm going to have to go through all of our lands, make sure we've not got too many forts, and also go through all of the governor policies. I don't think we've got enough political influence to really, <laughs> to really do much about that, but yeah. Uh, uh, 
Uh, this is going to be a long job, I think. Let's also go for Reiterate Tire Proclamation, which is going to keep all of our vassals kind of happy. Well, there we go. Reiterate Tire Proclamation. Our envoys scattered across the Aegean, attending to Buloy from Ionia to Achaea with reassurances and reminders. So that basically makes all of our guys kind of happy we're gonna go attract greek colonists next and now our goal guys is to reunite alexander's empire so we need to take some land off thrace the seleucids um and the morians as well so yeah that's gonna be interesting but now we are just gonna buckle in try and get that aggressive expansion down try and get our stability back up and make sure we don't have too many rebellions i'm also going to go through all of my vassals and improve opinions with them so that we can start to integrate them now we can attract greek colonists in the east guys and i'm thinking we go for amphilios Syrias over here so let's go for that we can now also get phoenician timber which will give us some sort of navy stuff basically which isn't as interesting to us but we can get some more ports from this uh, from this little route here. And then we can build 10 Octera for 150 gold, guys. I don't think we're going to do that. Like, no one else is going to be able to compete with the amount of ships we have currently anymore now that the Ptolemies are gone. So we should be fine. We can now also form Macedon, guys. So I think we're going to do that because it gives us 150 uh, political influence. So there we go. Look at that. That is fantastic. Very nice indeed. Isn't that glorious to see Macedon ruling over all of this now? And what do we do with all that political influence? Well, we're going to be changing governor policies, guys. Mainly to harsh treatment, to be fair, because no one is very happy at the moment. And the mission Phoenician Timber is completed. Let's go for Antigonia's ports over here, which is going to give us a rather nice port. And let me just show you how much this war has screwed us, guys. Look at all of these places on harsh treatment and i've not even put everywhere on it yet because we don't have the influence like <laughs> we are screwed <laughs> there's gonna be so many rebellions very very soon but um i'm saving up a war chest to see if I can, see if i can use some mercs for it when we get there i'm also going to start building a few libraries around the place because our research efficiency is absolutely crap at the minute guys <laughs> and we are finally making some more stability now guys just dipped under 10 and we are about to go under 50 aggressive expansion as well which is going to be rather helpful that needs to get down to zero that needs to get up to 60 ideally so we can actually start integrating a few of our vassals guys i would like to go with the small ones first the big ones are still useful in war so some of these smaller ones like these little cities etc we'll have a look and see which ones are going to be best most of our vassals are actually tributaries guys so we can't actually integrate them but if we keep high relations hopefully they will become client states or something like that and allow us to integrate them eventually well, i'm going to take arms for hire here just to get some more macedonian freemen around our lands <laughs> it's got that bad guys <laughs> and now we have our first independence war so let's go and deal with that and another one i think this is going to be the first of many guys until we get our stability back up to about 60 Atropatine has declared war on us now as well. Let's uh, let's go and actually raise some troops then, shall we? That's probably going to be quite helpful, I think. And there's another one all in Egypt. Well, that's one of the rebellions dealt with. Fantastic. Now we can get rid of this other rebellion. Fantastic. And now Libya is in a war against us too. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. And another one in Egypt. <laughs> No, <laughs> we can get rid of the main Egyptian revolt. So let's do that. Let's get rid of those boys and then we can come down and deal with these. Oh, and I didn't realize that the Seleucids were involved in this war as well. Hmm, that is kind of interesting. What did they want to take? Take Kawarin, which looks like they have done that. So I think let's get some mercenaries, guys. We're going to get that 16k. And let's also get this 11k here too. Well, we are going to accept peace with this little rebellion. They're going to have these little bits as free. But honestly, they were separated anyway from our land. So that's fine. And then we can actually now send these guys up to here. And then we can get rid of the Libyan revolt as well. And now Akia is fighting a war against us. Hopefully our little guys here are going to be able to deal with that. And the annoying thing is the Seleucids are still mega strong. <laughs> Even though we managed to split them in half, we have not reduced their military power at the moment. So yeah, let's see what we can do. It looks like they're going after these boys up here, but we do have guys on the way coming down the road and it looks like they're going to win that, but if we can get our units in there. Oh, no. 
There we go. Now we should be able to beat them. Good. Send them back from whence they came. And now Memphis is leading our rebellion against us. <laughs> Finally, we get some tech. Oh my days. It's been a while, hasn't it? Since we've got any tech. And I think we're going to go for open religion. Try and make our people a bit happier. And I think that war just actually peaced out. So... Okay, that's fine. I mean, we didn't lose too much. Just a little bit of land up here. So... That's okay. No problem. We'll focus on the other wars. And another one. <laughs> this is getting rather silly right now. Well, there's Samaria done. Fantastic. We can get open religion. Nice, guys. Allowing us to build grand temples when we have the chance. There we go. We can get rid of the Achaeans as well. Now we can get rid of the Memphis Revolt too. Well, there we go. The next rebellion as well. We can also now do Stratahos of Asia because we've got some happy pops over there. Not too many, but but some. <laughs> Let's also go for Phalanx and Spearman Offense. That's going to be really helpful going forward. Well, guys, I am going to take a break. I've been playing for a very very long time so um yeah i need a break from this you will see me again tomorrow hopefully slightly more rested and able to <laughs> reform the rest of the uh, the empire but let, let's see and i'm back guys and a little less tired than i was yesterday um and i've had a really good look around and ultimately i think we're in a much more stable position than we were you know sort of uh a few moments ago, <laughs> with all our wars and everything, a lot of these now are starting to get towards positive. So we're going to focus on getting our stability up a little bit more. And then I'm also going to consider attacking into Greece, attacking these little guys in Anatolia as well. Because we do have some nice little missions here that give us happiness with these cultures over in Anatolia and with the Greek cultures as well so that's going to really help us out now the video is getting rather long already guys so i'm not going to be showing every little thing but i am going to be showing a lot of what we are still doing but i'll jump back in and out based on what's happening i'll let you know when the wars start anyway first of all we're going to try and get our stability slightly higher still and while we're dealing with everything else i think it's time to clean up the peloponnese carthage owns epirus now we don't need epirus uh, per se, but I would like to take all of the Peloponnese to try and get some extra money, honestly. <laughs> well, there we are. War with all of these boys to start with. And now we get Hellenic Liberator, which gives Ionian culture gains Greek Liberator 7.5% happiness. That is what we're talking about, boys. Fantastic. We are just going to chain through the Peloponnese, basically, guys. So I'm going to declare another war against Oreos over here. And that's going to take all of sort of uh, Boeotia and Attica as well. Let's go. And now we have Antigonus Gonatus. Hopefully that will help with some of the disloyalty of all the people because <laughs> they have been pretty disloyal, most of them, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and we have another independence war. Not great. Uh, we might have to get some mercs for this, but uh, we'll see. Maybe just the six and a half thousand. I think they'll be fine. Well, there we go. Let's start piecing out all of these guys. It should be nice and easy now. There we go. Exactly 100 war score. Very nice. And instantly we got a rebellion. So, And we can get rid of Galilee now too. Fantastic. And let's go and deal with this northern rebellion. And let's get rid of the Akarnanian rebellion. Fantastic. I've actually realized, guys, Demetrios dying was not a good thing. It has removed all of our claims from like Seleucids and all that sort of thing. So we're going to be taking a lot of aggressive expansion again going forward. Well, there we go. Cleaning up Greece nice and quickly. And look at all these forts, guys. I am going to clean them up before these areas become too disloyal. And there is this rebellion as well, guys. And once more to the breach, dear friends. Doesn't that look lovely, guys? Very nice indeed. I mean, <laughs> the forts need to go. <laughs> We'll try and sort that pretty quickly. We're not going to stop there, guys. We are going to get into all these little boys over here. And now we're getting a few more techs. So let's go down towards gradual economic integration, guys. That, of course, is going to help out with our integration of a lot of these cultures. And look how clean and juicy that looks and this looks, guys. We've cleaned up everything over here. We do have a little revolt, but... <laughs> Nothing changes, does it? We can also now resettle Loranda, which is going to give us some good cultural benefits for Paphlagonian and Isaurian. So let's go for that. And we've taken Rhodes now as well, guys, so we can get Rhodian closure too. Fantastic. Now we can get gradual economic integration, which is what we saved all our money up for. Now I can start 
making some of these places a little bit happier. And now for a big one, guys. We are going to destroy Pontus over here. Let's see how we do. Well, there we go with Pontus, guys. It's quite a lot of aggressive expansion, but uh, it wasn't too hard a war. It's just a bit annoying. Someone else jumped on them as we did, so uh, we can't actually take this little bit of land, which... <laughs> Oh, well, what can you do? Well, we've just dealt with another couple of rebellions, guys. So I am going to disband all of the troops. We still have major issues with our population loyalty. So I'm going to try and start getting a bit more cash. The problem is, like, in these areas, we haven't been able to delete fortresses yet. So, yeah, we're, we're losing so much to fort maintenance in these disloyal areas. So I'm going to start deleting a few forts in areas that I can do. And then hopefully we can start building some uh, some good buildings around. But look at us. We do look very juicy at the moment, don't we? We just need to get into the Seleucids and Thrace. I've moved a few pops around, guys. So we can now do Satrap of Phrygia as well, which is going to give us an extra couple of cities in here too. Nice. Well, while we're here, guys, and we are fighting... Um, a few independence wars again. Let's go and try and take Europa from Thrace so that we can get a nice clean border over here. Basically, I'm just trying to clean up all of these uh, western borders first, guys, before we'll then start heading east. And for some strange reason, Garamantia de decided to de declare war on us, so... <sighs> I mean... <laughs> We'll just go and fight them off. Well, there we go. Thrace dealt with it. It was actually a bit of a harder war than I expected, but overall, nice. We now have Lysimachia in our hands too, as well as Byzantion. So that is fantastic. Like I say, guys, going to clean up the west side first before we then think about going east towards this. <laughs> and I cannot tell you how many independence wars we've had in this time, guys. It's pretty much there's one constantly, at least one. It's normally two, but it, <laughs> it's, it's normally two, like I was saying, but there's normally at least one going on at any one time. Like, there's been no peace. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Right, let's take this against Garamanti. It takes half of Chironatia away from them, so that's fine. Well, now we're going to do something that might be a little bit risky, guys. We've just dealt with a few rebellions. Uh, we're also going to keep some of our troops over this side in case Carthage comes down this way. We're going to try and take out Epirus because we need all of Greece for one of our missions. So they've got a lot of people, including Garamantia. Um, but yeah, all we want to do is just take Epirus and get out of this war. Well, there we go. We can now take Epirus. Rather painful war, honestly, for not much reason. So, at least that's good. Well, we can now do the League of Corinth, guys, which will release the League of Corinth as a feudatory in Greece. Honestly, I don't mind that. It stops them rebelling, keeps this area happy, and it's probably going to be quite a powerful vassal. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Well, here we go. The League of Corinth. There it is. All of the Peloponnese. That's fine. Honestly, I am not too bothered about that. We didn't invest that much money into it, and it was very, very disloyal most of the time. So that is going to be a very powerful vassal for us, honestly. Well, guys, I think it's time to start looking east. We look pretty healthy right now, so let's take the remnants of the Seleucid Empire. I want to mop up all of this, honestly, and probably Atropatine as well before we then look either further east or further north into this area here and try and mop up the rest of Anatolia. We pretty much want to come up to around the Caucasus, maybe just below the Caucasus, and that'll be good. So let's go. And the Seleucids already want to sue for peace, so um, I'm guessing that's a good sign. How did they get that army up there? We've literally had an army marching down here the whole time. Now we can formalize divinity, which will make Antigonus be worshipped as Zeus. I mean, he has done a pretty good job, hasn't he? Fantastic. Well, there we go. All shall praise the god Basileus Demophanes. Fantastic. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And unfortunately, our troops are definitely just so much worse. We lost a 24,000 versus a 10,000 before, which, yeah, it's... It's unfortunate, but we haven't been able to focus on military tech at all. Uh, and of course, with all those integrated cultures, we are struggling. The only real good army is the Levy of Macedonia over here, which can do phalanx and has spearmen, heavy infantry and heavy cavalry. So that is really the only good one. Well, now even these guys were losing against a force much smaller than themselves. So, <sighs> yeah, I just don't really understand. I mean, we have 
I'm pretty sure we've got the right setup here and everything, but... Oh well. Well, let's take Atropatine out of the picture. Finally, we did beat that army, so... We can maybe have a bit more leeway down here. Oh, and finally, we've kind of pretty much stack wiped all of their troops, apart from a couple of troops up there. Uh, I don't know about down in these areas, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not too bothered about all that sort of stuff. Well, there we go, guys. We should now be able to peace out. I don't know how much we can actually take, but we've got to take all these small little bits. Of course, we're going to take Seleucia as well. That's actually 90. Well, that there itself is 100 war score, so let's take that. And uh, let's go chilling again. That then allows us to do Antigonid Supremacy, which gives us political influence and loyalty of characters. We are the rightful successors. When Alexandros, spiraling deeper the depths of a fever that he would never recover from, weakly murmured to the strongest while on his deathbed, few knew at the time that this was a prophecy, one that foretold the hour of triumph that now sees Demophanes standing atop the other Diadochi. The other successors and their bedraggled levies have been driven from the battlefield, abandoned by both mercenary and friends, and even now Macedonian agents pursue their family members to the very ends of the earth. Soon there will be no one left that has a claim to the sundered empire of Alexandros, save the brilliant general who forged the pieces together, Demophenes the first Antigonid. I mean, he doesn't have good stats, let's be honest, but <laughs> he, he is the rightful successor. <laughs> Tech-wise, guys, I'm going to try and get our income up slightly by coming down here towards the Turgis. So now we've got the deity of Antigonus Monothalmus. That is awesome, to be fair. Aggressive expansion change, and it gives us 20% religious advance progress, which is pretty good. And Philonides won the Olympic Games. What a boy. Let's go. Six stability for that. Nice. Well, guys, time to clean up Anatolia. Let's go after Pontus. They are allied with Greater Armenia. We're going to go Iris Inferioris rather than this up here. So, uh, yeah, let's go. And Garamantia has declared war on us again. <laughs> Ah, oh, thanks, Garamantia. Well, this is what we're going to take from them over here. Should be nice and simple. There we go. Well, let's peace out with Garamantia. There we go. Nice and easy. Now we've got all of Chironatia back as well. Fantastic. Well, we're going to attack these little guys in the north over here. Should be nice and easy. And this might be the biggest section of... Uh, rebellions we've had yet oh dear well, there we go let's take the northern coast very nice help with these boys oh my god if i have to deal with another independence war <laughs> this, is, this is just so painful guys and there's another one <sighs> great well there we go well, this is what we're gonna take guys uh i'm gonna leave that that's fine uh, and unfortunately these guys jumped on them so we can't actually take that back but we still have nice borders we still have most of egypt so I don't mind. Oh, I can now disband the levies. Oh my god. I've never wanted peace so much in this game before. <laughs> I think I may have underestimated how long this would take, guys. So if you do enjoy this pain and probably cumulative at this point, 10 hours of gameplay so far, <laughs> please do like and subscribe. <laughs> to make it worth it. <laughs> now we can do Riches of Silesia, guys, which is pretty good. Gives us some import networks, and we can also do restoring ancient capital, which gives some good benefits to Tyana over there. Well, guys, I think it's time to go back to war. Right, guys, we are going to launch a few wars at once just to get them all out of the way. So we're going to go for this, which brings in Greater Armenia, all that sort of thing. Then we're going to go for this as well. We're going to go for these guys here as well. So, basically, we're just cleaning up this whole area now. Right then, guys, this is what we are going to take. A bit of a horrible war, honestly. 76 aggressive expansion. <laughs> oh, well, looks like we're going to have to go to peace <laughs> for a little while again. Oh, no, we had a succession crisis, guys. That is not good because we've got a baby in charge. How old are they? They are zero. Oh, no. <laughs> That's, that's not good. I, I really didn't need that right now. 14 stability. Oh, that is going to hurt our loyalty. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Ah, well, we'll be able to deal with it. And you may be wondering why I haven't changed many laws, guys. And the main thing is just our stability has always been rather low. So because of just everything going on in our realm, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so I would really like to get back to either noble retinues or royal guard or something like that. But... Yeah, we, we need that stability nice and high. And Yamnat has declared war on us. 
Okay, that's fine. Let's uh, let's deal with that. That should actually allow us to clean up some of this area. And just as that happens, we have about 10 independence wars. Always fun. Well, you know, things aren't good when we're losing in battles to these guys. Honestly, oh my god. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> oh dear. Well, uh, we'll just have to gather some actual good troops like the, uh, the Levy of Macedon over here. This war is a lot, lot harder than I expected. They've got a lot of troops. And their troops are pretty darn good overall, I've got to say. So, yeah, it's, it's been a struggle. It's been a struggle. Well, there we go, guys. This is what we can take from this war. We've also, we've also got rid of about five more rebellions. So, <laughs> oh! I think I'm going to have to take a break again soon, guys. But we are in a very good spot. We just have no loyalty from any of these places. Nobody likes us. We're going to have to wait for that to tick down again. But I promise you, we will start going east very soon. Because look at that, Parthia is absolutely smashing them. We have to take, like, an, a place up here to reform it. I think it's that. So that's not going to be too fun, but let's see what we can do. Another day, another t-shirt, and another chance to contemplate what the hell I'm doing with my life, guys. <laughs> now, I am going to be changing across to noble retinues straight away. Honestly, guys, let's go for that. That's going to remove that minus 5% from our unintegrated culture group happiness, so should be good. And you may be wondering why I'm not doing these missions down at the bottom here. Well, I have actually tested these out earlier in the day today, guys, and Honestly, I don't think these are worth it because we already have quite a few integrated cultures. And when we integrate those cultures that are needed for the missions, um, these guys go down to like 25%, which is just really, really not very helpful. And on top of that, the other way to do it would be to make them all slaves. And I'm not willing to do that apart from Adrissian because these cultures are quite large in our empire right now. It would be a lot of people being very, very unhappy. So um, we'll do that with Adrissian, but apart from that, nothing else. And as you can see, pretty much all of them are already slaves. So we are just going to do that anyway. That is going to allow us to do this mission, the Fate of Thrace, which gives popper simulation speed for some of these cultures. Very nice indeed. And now we're in much better shape because of the law change. A lot of these are now positive which is so helpful. I've also been building a lot of grand temples and grand theatres and all that sort of thing around the lands as well. Right, guys, it is time to go to war in the east again. Honestly, my plan right now is to somehow take all of this land here, potentially this as well, but maybe not even this, uh, and fight these guys, Moria included. Take that piece of land. We also need to take uh, Persopolis over here. Um, and we need to take one of these pieces of land down this way too and basically reunite alexander's empire without fully reuniting it and then we should have claims on all of this stuff and then it'll make it so much easier to conquer it so um let's see whether we can do that and it's taken a while guys but we now we can get military access through parthia allowing us to come all the way down this coast which yeah, that's very, very useful. And that stops us having to send our ships all the way around, which I thought they might all die, to be fair. <laughs> well, Parthia's actually been taken over over here, so uh, <laughs> let's just uh, ask for military access from these guys, which also has taken quite a while. And I feel very much like Alexander now, guys. We are in the far, far east now, very close to India. Fantastic. Well, unfortunately, this is all we can take currently because... Um, we can't actually take anything outside our range here, which is a bit unfortunate. So even though we do occupy it, we are not currently in range. And I don't have any techs quite on the way yet. So we're going to have to take all of this. And then we're going to have to fight. Uh, oh, we're going to have to fight the big boys, I think. And then we'll be able to have these guys in our range, I guess. Right, guys, time for the big one against this monstrous horde. I'm hoping they don't get access over here. And we're just going to fight on the eastern front. The main aim is just to connect all of our lands here so we can go through the Seleucids. Get into here, go north, get that, and then hopefully we'll have claims on a lot of this region. Uh, but let's see, let's see, let's see how we do. Honestly, guys, at the minute, nothing much has happened because I think they're in the middle of a civil war with Parthia. So, yeah, it's kind of chaos over here. Well, the main issue we've got here, guys, is that Parthia keeps taking bits of land back and it's actually blocked us off from coming around this way. 
So that is not good. I don't think we can declare war on Parthia as well. So yeah, that's unfortunate. And we can't fabricate a claim on them because we don't actually border them anywhere either. Well, honestly, guys, I think we just do this and kind of mop up most of this area and leave Parthia and these guys to fight it out and see who wins. Well, look at the army that we have assembled ready to invade India, guys. Pretty nice indeed. I think, honestly, we're not going to worry about aggressive expansion for a little bit. And we are just going to go full ham for all of this over here. I'm going to save a bit of political influence because we can't even fabricate a claim over here yet. I'm going to have to take all of that. Uh, take this little bit of Pandaya. And see, maybe we could even take, like, this bit. And then we can attack Moria straight away. But I'd prefer to go through here. It's going to be easier, isn't it? Here we go. Let's go to war, boys. Well, there we go. We didn't even actually fight, like, literally any battles at all, guys. So, uh, nice, easy little victory for us there. And this is what happens when you have so many armies, guys. For some reason, I've got an army down here that <laughs> is just killing barbarians for backup. So... <laughs> I don't think we need to do that, bro. And look, what are you guys doing? Like, why are you here? <laughs> and I've moved a few pops around, so now we can do this, which gives us a free metropolis in Pella, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's go. Well, here we go, boys. A massive war. We are going to be fighting Moria. Now, we only want these two provinces, so that's fine. And then we're going to take Pandaya out, and then hopefully we can snake our way up there as well so let's get into it come on this is gonna be fun and there the siege is done nice boys let's march into moria this is uh going further than alexander did let's go and now we're beginning to see the troops that they have they've got quite a few but uh i think our troops will be better but we'll see well there we go look at that we are absolutely smashing them and we won the olympics 77 uh, <laughs> stability right now, somehow. Well, here is a massive battle, guys. We're going to be filtering troops in. Look, they've got, they've still got about 30,000 to bring in. So we might as well put everyone into this <laughs> and see whether we can win. I mean, we are winning already. So it looks like we are going to win. Very nice indeed. That is what we like to see. And there we go. This is what we're going to take. I know it's a little bit greedy, guys. And this area is actually quite Hellenic, which is uh, pretty impressive from the Seleucids, I've got to say. And I was going to say, we've not had an independence war for a while, so uh, why not a better time than now? <laughs> and once again, into Pandia, my friends. Let's go. Oh, and I feel so bad for the Seleucids. They're called the Persian Empire, but this is the land they have now. <laughs> That's rather embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> and there we go. We can take this. There we go. Fantastic. Let's go. Well, here we go. Into Moria, guys. So the main thing is to take, obviously, Tak Sasha over here. That is literally all I want from this war. If we can just snake our way up there. The rest of these troops are just going to be there for fending off the Morians. Well, the war's not going too badly, guys. It's just quite annoying. <laughs> like They've got a lot of troops up here in the north, honestly. So... We need to kind of get a move on here and uh, start fighting them. We actually lost the last battle up here. Well, I've got to say, a pretty stressful war so far. We've done a lot of battles. Um, it's pretty back and forth. We just need to keep hold of the war goal. As soon as we get a bit further in to the land, basically, they just flood all their troops in behind to take the war goal. So I think we just defend the war goal over here, honestly. Well, guys, I think we might have done it. So let's see if we can chain our way all the way up. Let's make sure that it's not 100% war score. And it's not. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. That is what we're going to take, guys. What a border. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. 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 Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, it's been so, so long. <laughs> oh, yes, though. That is, that is pretty cool indeed. Let's go. Oh my god, guys. And now that we are at peace, we can reunite Alexander's empire. Look at that. Tier 3 formable with unintegrated culture group happiness, morale of armies, diplo rep, national freeman happiness, and we change our name to the Hellenistic Empire. For too long, parasites and scavengers have made a feast of the great empire that Alexander spent a lifetime building. It is time we do away with all claimants, usurpers, and delusional provincial strongmen. There can only be one authority within the empire of Alexander the Great, one upholder of the great Hellenistic legacy that this great man founded. That one power could not possibly come from from any dynasty but our own. The Antigonids, of course, only a family that respects the Argiad traditions can legitimate, legitimately claim its legacy. 
Oh my god, let us take this. This has been a long time coming, hasn't it? <laughs> and of course, our capital will remain at Pella. And look at our beautiful colour on the map. And there we can see all the claims of where we need to take, where we should take down here as well. Mayos Hormos, this little bit. So we'll get to cleaning all that up. And uh, then we will have formed Alexander's Empire. There's only a few more wars to go, guys. But first of all, let us chill for a little bit. Get that aggressive expansion down. For our military idea, let's go with discipline. And I think there's only one thing we can go for civic, which is uh, provincial loyalty. That's definitely going to help. Well, I was going to go for the unintegrated culture happiness in oratory here, guys. But I w we can actually take that for religious ideas over here. So instead of that, we are going to go with loyalty of governors because we have been struggling with that quite a bit. And that instantly got rid of half of of the disloyal characters nice so i just realized this is actually integrated culture happiness guys so instead we're going to go for pop conversion speed and then that gives us war score cost national freeman output and national slave output as well very nice indeed well let's give our troops a well-earned rest my friends right then guys time to start cleaning these borders up let's go well that's what we're going to take from armenia guys just makes the borders a little bit cleaner we'll also get into pontus as well just for a bit of bants well there's a couple of things happening right now that are really good for us Yama Yamanati over here has a revolt and so does Kush. So we should be able to clean this land up pretty quickly. Well, that is Pontus dealt with. Nice. Well, we've kind of got wars going on all over the place. We're going to start a war over here. We've got a war down there. We've got a war across here and we've got an in independence war up here. So uh, it's quite hard to keep track of, but we are just going to keep on pushing. Boy. <laughs> mm, the annoying thing here is the fact that the Roman revolt is involved in this war and they're quite big and scary, but hopefully we can just like sort of get in and get out before or they get too big for their boots. And I didn't realize Armenia was in this war too. So um, yeah, that is a little bit annoying, but I don't think they'll have much headway. But there we are. This is what we're going to take from Kush. All of our claims, all of that juicy stuff. Nice. And there we go. We can beat out Thrace. Very nice. And into Carthage as well. And there we go. War with Carthage over. And into the Kushite revolt guys as well. Literally only just to take this singular province. So we don't want to be in this war too long. Well, there we go. Much cleaner borders now, guys. Just one last big boy to go and just for the sake of it because we've got so much money guys let's go to royal army well guys it is time to get into the parthian revolt hopefully they're not too border gory by the time we've cleaned up this area but i think it's going to take more than one war so let's go well here we are this is what we're going to take from the parthian revolt guys and we're going to go straight to war with parthia not much aggressive expansion either wow a bit of lag from the game there but <laughs> Look at that. I wish our name would come all the way across. That would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Straight into Parthia as well, boys. Well, there we go. That's what we're going to take from Parthia, guys, as well. Nice. And look at this now, guys. Literally four disloyal provinces and that's it. Wow. <laughs> right then, guys. I think it's time to get into Moria as well and take our last remaining provinces over here in the east. Um, and then we'll have to take a couple in the north maybe as well. I want to just clean this up basically. There we go. The final war against Moria and we have taken it further than even Alexander could as well. Can we even take more? No, unfortunately not. But we can actually take one more province. Very nice. Let's go for that. And it really lags now whenever we do anything. Right then, let's take the last places from the Parthian Revolt. Let's take the last areas from Parthia. There we go. That is all of our claims in Parthia. Let's go. And there we go. Fantastic. Well, guys, it is done. Alexander's empire is reforged. We are by far the most powerful nation in the world. I mean, Rome's all right, but... We have 24,000 pops right now, 400,000 manpower, um, EU4 numbers coming in for us there. Uh, that was a journey, guys, so please do like if you did enjoy this. Now, I'm thinking of doing a couple of videos afterwards, potentially a playing tool as this Hellenistic Empire, if we get to 500 likes, and I'll do a full review of this campaign, guys, as well, if we get to 250 likes. So, do make sure you like this video. I hope you have enjoyed. It's been a journey. It's been a very, very long journey, <laughs> but finally... We got there. I mean, Hellenistic Empire doesn't even, it doesn't even hardly fit on the screen right now. And I can't zoom out anymore. That's as far out as we can zoom. <laughs> so uh, the thumbnail is going to be fun. But um, yes, I hope you did enjoy, guys. Please do like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video. And once again, massive thank you to the channel members of Kawi, Pascal, and David. If you are interested in supporting the channel, you can do for as little as $1 a month down below. Check it out.